Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're going to take a look at another older photo, another retro photo, this one probably from around this, what, what did they say? This is from 1984, so this looks like a photo from around the 70s or the 80s. You can usually tell because if you look at the photo, like, they're really... They have like a lot of red or orange left over in the photo. It's just something that happens with those older sort of analog photos as they start to age and the pigments in the photo paper start to decay and fall apart. So this is a picture from Jax Cologne on Reddit, and this is a picture of his brother and his father from 1984, and they're hanging out on the beach. Probably, I don't, I wouldn't even guess where this is. This is like California or something. Maybe the East Coast. I don't know. I, I've been to the beach. I've, I'm not a fan of the beach in any particular way, but it's an okay time. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to clean up the kind of orange hues and everything in this picture in order to make it look a little bit more presentable. So we're just going to open it up into a secondary tab. You could just right click and like open image in a new tab or just click on the link here at the top. And then we'll just control A to select all and copy and paste it into Photoshop. And when you copy stuff with Photoshop, you've got something inside of the computer's, you know, paste clipboard. You can just select new. And then usually it'll have it available to you, but you can click at the clipboard and the clipboard size is usually set to whatever the image's size is that's currently being stored in the computer's clipboard. So then I can just paste this image in here and we will be good to go to start making some manipulations. And let me change the size of everything here. I'm switching my method of recording Photoshop to a smaller resolution on my computer screen. That way my mouse pointer will be natively bigger and it'll be a better representation of what's happening on screen. So I'm going to hit command zero or control zero on the PC to get my canvas zoomed in to exactly my screen. And I'm going to start making some adjustments to this image. Now, the main problem with this image is it's got a weird orange tone to it, and there's a couple of ways to go about doing that. One of them is you can add a photo filter. So if you add a photo filter, if you are making an analog photo, you've got a giant projector in the image lab where you put the film into it to print it onto photo paper and develop it. And what you'd be doing with a photo filter is you'd be placing like a blue like piece of plastic in front of the projector onto that photo paper to kind of counteract some of the warming hues of this orange. So we can actually simulate that here in Photoshop. And really, a lot of the stuff inside of Photoshop, in case you may not be aware, is a throwback to stuff that you would have been doing in analog photography inside of a dark room or inside of a completely blacked out room if you're working with color printing for photos. So as you can see here, as I'm sort of playing around with these three default cooling filters, which use a slightly different hue of blue in order to counteract different shades of orange, I've already started to remove a fair amount of the orange discoloration. And it looks like cooling filter 82 is the one that is the closest to what I want. And that counteracts most of what's happening in the picture, especially if you toggle it. Now, the trouble is you got to be really careful with how like the opacity or density here on this little property slider for this particular adjustments layer, because if you're not too careful, you can end up with a blue igloo type of image. And this just looks like somebody's gone on like an excursion to the advertisements for those little icy snow cones that you can buy at like the zoo with the two little polar bears on it. So I'm going to probably have this around 20% ish, 25% looks like like the sort of threshold before everything starts changing color to blue. And then you could just use a combination of photo filters, but that's kind of inefficient. What you'd probably want to do is either just use a color balancing filter right here. This one that looks like a pair of scales 
or use that in conjunction with a single photo filter. So what this is going to allow me to do now is I'm going to start grabbing, starting from the shadows, that's how I like to work with color balance. Starting from the shadows, I'm going to slowly work on tweaking these sliders in order to get as close as I can to what looks like a normal human tone of color. I mean, clearly this dude's dad is tan, he hangs out on the beach a lot, it's the 80s. They didn't have internet, so you couldn't just go home and watch Netflix, so... All you could do is go outside with people and be human and not be weird and stuff. So we're just gonna kind of drag these sliders around until we remove more of that kind of orangeness from the image. And this is looking like the cyan to red scale here, as we kind of play around with that, pulling out some of that orange. And there's really, I mean, as you play around with this tool, you get a feel for what you need to drag around, but for the most part, the most efficient way to go about doing this is to just make slow, incremental changes to the image, little by little, with multiple different layers inside of Photoshop. There's no reason to go buck wild on any single layer, because if it's more accurate and it's about as fast to just slowly tweak multiple layers, rather than going nutso on just one, I mean, that's what I would say you should go with, because it's more accurate and it won't go absolutely bonkers and make it, like, really pink, like I was just doing right there. So I'm gonna pull this a little bit more magenta, a little bit more cyan. The shadows are looking pretty good, although, if I zoom in here, this, like, probably black or brown hair is looking kind of reddish, but... One of the issues here with this image is it wasn't scanned at a very high DPI because this is just being shared on Reddit, obviously. So I don't have a lot of room to work with. If, if I did, I'd be able to tell if this was actually a smudge on the image or if that's just a bird. I'm going to assume it's an actual smudge. I'm going to grab the spot healing tool and go back down to the base image. And I'm just going to remove that because it looks weird. And I feel like it. And this part of his pant leg almost looks like, with all the pixelation, that he's holding like a cigar or something. But nope, he's just a father balancing his son, probably hoping that he doesn't hit his soft spot and make him um, a special child, a special flower child. It's a little late by the 1980s to have a special flower child that you drummed on their head. That was more of like a 60s and a 70s thing. Uh, there's a little, there's a little spot of white here, like there's a piece of dust either on the lens or whatever they used to scan this image in. And the rest of these just look like there's just birds in the background, and there's a slight... You might not be able to see this in the video, but there's a slight discoloration along the edge of this image, because it was probably in an old photo in a frame somewhere, and it's slowly been getting sun damage over the last, you know, 30, 40 years. So we'll just try to clean up a couple of these little weird imperfections. I can't tell if this is a necklace. Is that a necklace? It... I don't think this is a necklace. I think this is actually a piece of discoloration. It almost looks like a seashell necklace. But I don't see any neckband here holding it up. So we'll just delete that. Perfect. And now we'll finish up adjusting these colors. So let's go back to the shadows. Okay, those are done. Uh, let's see. I I tend to aim on the lighter side for coloration as opposed to the darker side. Because you can always make an image's colors darker with other tools like curves adjustments layers. So there's no reason to go absolutely crazy with just this tool. You know, you have a lot of different tools and a lot of them can handle individual color channels. And with Photoshop, it's whatever you're most comfortable with. Like. There's a thousand different tools in Photoshop, and no matter which one you want, unlike what my teacher in college used to think, there's a dozen different ways to achieve the same result, and nobody gives a shit in the professional world so long as it looks the way that it should. Like, as long as it behaves the way that it should when you import an image into After Effects or another animating program, as long as it prints correctly, or as long as it looks correct when you send it off to a client to be used digitally on a website, Nobody is going to ask questions, because that would just be crazy and stupid. 
if it's not broken, don't fix it sort of question. So now we're going to click on this little snake looking thing on a grid to add a curves adjustment layer. And the curves adjustment layer is a, a tool that lets us adjust the brightness and the darkness of the image and possibly add a little bit of extra contrast to kind of bring up some of the details in the background of this image. Again, if this was scanned at a higher DPI than just the default 72 or 75 that they used for the internet, I would have a lot easier time doing this, but as it stands, we have enough to kind of get started. Now, whenever you pull up an adjustment layer and you get this little warning icon here, it's because you've started to make changes to the color space and it's changing the way that this brightness and darkness sort of histogram here in the background, this visualization of the peaks and troughs of what the color space is like in the image, um, you can just click on this little icon and that'll make it more accurate to what you're working on. You don't actually need to do that, but some people it helps them visualize what changes they need to make inside of the artwork, in this case an old photo. So what do I need to do with this? I want to bring down the highlights and I kind of want to bring up the dark points in the image. But the trouble here is that if you do that, you make everything kind of grayed out. So if I toggle this, you'll notice that everything is kind of taking on like a muted kind of grayed out tone. Like somebody, when this image was freshly painted, kind of took like a, a cloth and kind of dabbed out half the color. So you want to be really careful of that. But again, this is why we use multiple different layers. And if you're really getting confused and you think you might want to see some example of what the computer thinks you should change to this image, you can simply click this auto button and you can see what the computer thinks you ought to do with it. And frankly, it's not a terrible way to go. Like we could click auto on this layer, add another curves layer, click on this but that button to make the histogram more realistic. And then we can start bringing up the brights, bringing down the darks to add a little bit more contrast. And we can click on brightness and contrast and bring the contrast down just a smidgen. Bring the bright, we can even just try bringing the brightness down, but that doesn't look like what I want it to do. Let's see what autocorrect would assume it should do. Oh boy, that is one crispy dad. Like if you want a dad that is beef jerky flavored, use the auto filter inside of Photoshop for the contrast. You know, there's not a lot I can do with this picture. Let's just dump down the contrast by like five points. Let's leave the well let's bump the brightness up by 10 and then let's just grab all of these adjustments layers and put them inside of a folder and this is basically what we've done to this image we've pulled out the orange we've put back the kind of natural blue of hanging out on the ocean with a white sandy beach with a bunch of i don't know seaweed and shit on the ground Dad's got white or blue swim trunks and your little brother or older brother has got like a, a weird kind of I don't know what that is. It's just a polka dot pattern. It's kind of like light blue, white shirt, light blue cap, red socks and shoes. And that's not bad. This is pretty good. So that's the kind of how you fiddle with color correction to help fix old photos. And if you see little blemishes in the photo, you can just go in with the spot healing brush tool and remove them. And you gotta be careful though, like if you were gonna repair too many of these little pixelated blemishes on th this guy's face, you might end up losing details and like he'd be missing a mouth or missing an eye. That's just the trouble when you're working with lower resolution photos. If you were gonna start doing this for a living, you'd want to get a decent scanner and you can get a pretty good photo scanner from HP. You get one of those all in one scan fax print things and they can scan you a nice like 3000 DPI image if you really want to. Uh, it takes it forever to do it, but it can do it. You just got to make sure to keep it clean and dust free or else you're going to be doing a lot of extra heavy lifting inside of Photoshop. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I will link you to the source of this image in the video description and I will also include a download link for the sample PSD which uh, I will actually label correctly. This will be um, the adjustment layers. And if you want to download the original unslightly adjusted image from the internet to kind of work along with me, you have that option to do so yourselves. 
or you can just download the PSD and work from just the adjustment layers, working with me to kind of add more cyan or add less magenta or more green or blue or kind of change the, the adjustment curves layer here. Because basically how this works is white is obviously brightness, black is obviously darkness, and then this in the middle is the midtone. So you drag stuff up to make it brighter, drag stuff down to make it darker, and then the thing will curve itself naturally in an S-curve based upon the math that Adobe has created. So that's how you use some of that stuff. Hope this has been educational to you folks at home. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. I'll catch you guys next time. Toodles, everybody.